Welcome to the TMS 2000 training series. In this tutorial, we will explain how to set up cinema screens on the theater management system, also known as the TMS. We will also take a look at the additional options that would be available while adding a cinema screen, in case you are using an SCL Mark I or Mark II centralized playback server. Please take note of the time markers provided on screen. They will help you quickly scan and navigate to a specific section within this tutorial video. Double click the GDC TMS icon on your desktop, to start the application. In order to add cinema screens, you need to log into the TMS, using the admin user account credentials. Please contact GDC, in case you do not know the password for this particular user account. Once logged in, the monitoring tab of the TMS 2000 application, will be shown by default. You will notice that the monitoring tab is currently blank. That's because no cinema screens have been added yet. Every server, in each of the auditoriums, is assigned an IP address based on the cinema's management network, when it is installed. In order to add a server to the TMS, go to the Tools menu, and click on Preferences. Under the Preferences screen, double-click on the Server Management option. Before adding a server, you'll need to add a category. Click on the Add Category button, and type in the category name. This can simply be the name of your cinema. Click OK to create the category. Once done, you can add a server, by clicking on the Add Server button, and providing the required information. The name field, can be the auditorium number for your screen. To find the IP address for your server, check the network configuration on your server interface. In this example, we will enter the GDC SR1000's Ethernet 2 IP address, which is the management IP by default, set under the configuration tab of the web UI. Mention a password for the server. Furthermore, the VNC password field will remain disabled, in case the use default VNC password option is checked. If you have changed the VNC password for your server, uncheck this option and mention the custom password here. Select your server model from the type drop-down. Apart from GDC, the TMS2000 also recognizes media servers from other manufacturers. In this example, we will be adding a GDC SR1000 server. Select the category name you had created initially, from the category drop-down. You can also select the schedule alignment option, which enables automatic time adjustments for the server, for accurate show scheduling. In case of a dual projector setup, you would need to add two servers for a particular screen. While adding the slave server, the is slave server option needs to be checked. Lastly, click the OK button to add the server. You can repeat this process, to add other cinema screens. Once done, exit out of the server management screen, and go back to the monitoring tab. Here, the cinema screen that we just added, will now be displayed. After adding the server, you can also map other devices such as a projector, sound processor, and automation devices, to a particular screen. Once a device has been added to a screen, the user can view information, monitor and control this device, from the monitoring tab. To add a device, go to the screen tab. The cinema screen that we added previously, will be displayed under the screen list. Select the screen to which you want to map a device. 
Then, click on the Add Devices drop down. Here you can select the type of device that you want to set up. In this example, let us map a Barco projector and a Dolby CP750 sound processor to screen 1. After selecting the device type, you need to select the device model and provide relevant details such as ID, name, and IP address of the device that needs to be set up. The port number will be selected automatically, based on the device model selected. In case you are adding a projector, you can also mention the lamp model and warranty related details. Lastly, select the screen that you want the device to be mapped to. Click on the OK button to add the device. You can map other devices to the screen, by following the same process. Once done, select the screen from the screen list, and check if the added devices have been mapped to it correctly. In our example, the Barco projector and Dolby sound processor, have been successfully mapped to screen 1. Go back to the monitoring tab. The projector and audio processor related information, will be displayed under the relevant cinema screen. Please note, that the server status for the added screen, shows offline, as of now. This is because the connection between the DMS and the server, has not yet been established. To know more about how to get a server online, we would recommend that you watch the tutorial, which explains the monitoring tab in detail. If you are using an SCL Mark 1, or Mark II centralized playback server, the process of adding a cinema screen remains the same. In addition to the options which we have already discussed, the centralized playback option will also be available on the add server screen. This checkbox can be selected, to enable the centralized playback feature for a particular server. You can also enable the CPL skipping feature for the server, which allows you to skip unwanted parts of the featured CPL, and directly play the actual movie. This tutorial is now complete. Thank you for watching.